then I will call the meeting to order. Um, the announcement just went out that it's being recorded, so I've, everybody knows that. Um, I'll read the standard opening statement. This is the Northampton Conservation Commission for the 29th of August, 2024. The commission is a group of unpaid volunteers who work to protect the natural environment of Northampton. We are concerned with the eight interests defined in the Wetlands Protection Act, um, and our duties also include open space acquisition and management. We operate in a way that's consistent with open meeting law requirements. All meeting dates, times, and agendas are posted in advance, and we invite public comment during our meetings. However, we ask the public to limit their comments to issues that are within our purview. Today's agenda includes a notice of intent for warehouse addition, parking area reconfiguration, and related stormwater work on industrial drive, and uh, a continuation of a notice of intent for a 12 unit cluster development, um, an access road, pedestrian paths, stormwater work at the end of View Avenue. Um, I will uh, say first that the applicant for the uh, second case, the uh, uh, 12 unit cluster development has asked for a continuation until our uh, meeting on the 12th of September. And so we will not be opening that uh, case for discussion today. We uh, will be continuing it without consideration, without discussion. Um, if somebody really wants to uh, say something about that um, uh, during our uh, public comment, uh, segment, you can do so, but it won't be part of the official record because um, we're not opening that case for discussion until the 12th of September. Um, so the, uh, uh, I will ask first if there's a uh, uh, any comments on a case not before us today. Um, and I see a, one hand up, um, Jackie Balance. Yes, uh, thank you, Kevin. I have a, a general question, and I'm hoping that either Kevin or Sarah will be able to answer it. A while ago, you had a project with a buffer zone of 50 feet. That was at 39 Landy Avenue. This one at View Avenue is using a buffer zone of 35 feet that they're building right up to. My question is, how is the buffer zone determined for a project, whether it's going to be 35 feet or 50 feet or 100 feet? What are the, I don't even know where to look to find the answer. That's my it has question. To, has to do with zoning. Um, Sarah, do you want to address it in a more accurate technical way? So the, the buffer zone under the Wetlands Protection Act is 100 feet everywhere in Massachusetts. Um, the Northampton Wetlands Ordinance goes above and beyond that by establishing a, um, a protected zone which is dependent on zoning district districts. And um, that's within the Northampton Wetlands Ordinance, chapter 337 of the code. But both of these properties are in URB. 39 Landy and 8 View Avenue are both in urban residential B district. So the, one has a 50 foot buffer zone, one has a 35 foot buffer zone. The developer for Landy Avenue decided to move forward with a 50 foot. Oh, so that's a change that's already happened that we're not discussing tonight. That that was part of the the hearing on the Landy Avenue case. Wondering why the thirty five foot. That's an infill thing that we did, right? Uh, Jackie, you could send me an email. I'd be happy to okay. chat with you okay. off and offline about this. Thank you, thank you. I just, I just want to understand. I appreciate all the work you do, you guys. Conservation Commission and Urban Forestry are my two favorite city organizations. Y'all are on the front lines here of, <laughs> um, of the future. Mwah, bless you. And my friends who are here for, for the other hearing can go away if they want to. I see I see a well, couple of my I see a couple friends here. Okay. Well we're not going to discuss the uh, View Avenue uh, case. So if anybody okay. has anything else they would like to uh, bring up before we close public comment session, please uh, let me know. Raise your hand. If not, then the first item is approval of minutes, uh, the minutes that Sarah sent around for the 25th of April, which was our initial session considering the Landy Avenue project. Um, took up most of that meeting, so I remember it well. The minutes looked good to me. 
Um, any uh, amendments, modifications that anybody wants to suggest? Someone want to move approval of those minutes? I would. They look fine to me. I would move approval. And a second. Good. Made and seconded. Uh, if no amendments, uh, then all in favor. Roll call, Sarah. All right. So roll call vote on the minutes. Paul. Yes. David. Yes. Mason. Yes. Melissa. Yes. And Kevin. Yes. Unanimous. Thank you. All right. So our uh, first case is uh, the industrial uh, industrial drive uh, project uh, warehouse edition. Um, who's here to address that? Hello, everyone. This is Ryan Nelson from Arlevec Associates. Yes. I'm going to attempt to share my screen if everyone can see that. Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, so, so as stated, 168 Industrial Drive, this is an existing warehouse facility. This is the existing conditions of the site. I'll zoom in here. Industrial Drive located right here. North is in this direction. Um, almost the entirety around the site, with the exception of the front yard area, has paved parking and loading areas around the building. There's a bordering vegetated wetland located to the southeast. This is the boundary there. And then it um, has a lobe that comes back and projects over on this side of the property. So the 50 foot buffer zone is shown as this darker dashed line right here. And the 100 foot buffer zone is this line right here. So you can see there's existing portions of pavement within the buffer zone, but the vast majority of the developed part of the site is outside of the buffer zone. So what the applicant is looking to do is to construct a 8,000 square foot warehouse addition at the rear of the building. Um, we took into account and did an evaluation of the existing stormwater management system. Um, there's numerous catch basins, drainage manholes, and subsurface conveyance piping on the site. And um, we are proposing a net reduction in impervious surface on the site. So to offset this new impervious, which is or will be located within kind of a, a green courtyard space area that exists behind the building, uh, we'll, now be occupied by this impervious building, of course. Um, so to offset that, we're proposing the removal of 8,910 square feet of existing pavement that's within the buffer zone. That area, uh, once the pavement is re removed, will be loam seeded and planted as shown. So overall, there's a net reduction in impervious to the buffer zone and as well as on site. And therefore, that negates the need to uh, propose any new stormwater management measures. We're using the same exact system with no um, increase in stormwater peak discharges for the site. Um, silt fence will be installed per usual at the down gradient limits. For stormwater, I will briefly show you how that will work. Um, you can see there's an existing manhole at the rear parking lot behind the building right here. An existing roof leader from the existing building will be routed to a new manhole, as well as um, roof leaders from the proposed building addition will be routed to that new manhole. And then that manhole will have an outlet that connects to the existing drainage manhole that continues off site. And then for the other side of the building, same thing, there'll be a, a catch basin located at the low point of the loading dock that collects surface water. And that will be connected to a new manhole as well as roof leaders from that side of the building uh, that connect up to an existing drainage manhole nearest industrial drive. Um, and that continues off site. So those are really the only stormwater changes to the project. I think that it's all the key points. Happy to answer any questions. Questions from commissioners? Uh, yeah, what do you plan to plant in the uh, area that uh, where you're going to remove the asphalt? Sure, let me find that detail.
Um, so this area that's shaded is proposed to be grass. And for tree species, um, we have honey locust, pear, bald cypress, and black tupelo. And when you say uh, proposed to be grass, will that be uh, maintained as a lawn or let to grow uh, wild and get bush hogged once a year? What what, what kind of uh, grass surface will that be? Um, it, I don't think it necessarily needs to be maintained grass. Um, it needs to be maintained to some degree for snow storage uh, so that the snow can be plowed off the curb into that area, but um, some sort of annual maintenance if it's limited, if the commission feels that's necessary, would be needed. Ryan, did the plans propose a seed mix? If they did, I didn't catch They did it. not. Nope, we're okay. just calling out as grass. Is there a reason not to uh, uh, plant it with uh, something more, um, uh, more natural, I guess it's a, the simplest way to say it, uh, with uh, uh, whether it's wildflowers and uh, native seed mix or something that, yeah, I, I understand you don't want to get woody uh, um, bushes and so forth uh, developing there, but um, Right. Uh, it, is, there, is there a reason why it couldn't be uh, a little more uh, wild? Our thought was it's right adjacent to a very active trucking area. Um, so occasionally, you know, trucks back over the edge or go off the edge of the curb, even though they're not supposed to, and mostly due to the amount of snow storage in those areas. Um, it could be a conservation seed mix. I'm, we're not opposed to it. It seems that a conservation seed mix would, would make more sense uh, in generally. They're deeper rooted, uh, so they can deal with compaction better. Um, and also, some some folks in the field call uh, grass, turf grass, green asphalt or green concrete because it's really only semi-pervious. And there's about a 75 to 85% runoff, I am told. So uh, it seems that this, especially above the uh, the vegetative uh, wetlands area, it seems that it would be good to have something that could reduce the uh, increase uh, percolation and reduce runoff in that area. Plus, it would be more sustainable uh, in general. And some of these wild seed mixes are actually hardier than turf grass, which isn't native to the area and could handle the track the tra traffic a little better. And my, your 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 comment about uh, trucks going over the edge. Uh, if this is going to be a sustained um, uh, a sustained natural area as um, a part of what is resulting in a net improvement of previous conditions, um, how might one prevent uh, trucks from going over into this area? Um, I guess I should say currently they do because or not. I can't say to how often they do it, but this edge of parking isn't that well defined. Let me go back to this sheet. Um, I wish I had a picture was, to, show, to show you, but this rear there, port. There was somewhere in, in your plans where you had a, a, a cross section of a berm. Um, and I'm wondering if maybe that kind of a, a, you know, a, a, a sort of curb berm and I wonder if that might be something that would protect that area. Correct. That's what I was getting to. So there's an existing area of gravel where the pavement kind of deteriorates and it's not a hard transition. So under proposed conditions, this corner of the lot will be squared off and a curb is proposed. And then in addition to the trees being planted along the edge should be a little more apparent for where the limit is. Yeah, and I... I uh... I forget now uh, the dimensions of the, that cross section, but I assume that was at least several inches, uh, a, a you know, like a five, six inch curb, something like that. Yeah, a typical curb is usually six inches. Let me see if I can find it. Here it is. Yep. There it is, right in the middle there. there. Yep. 
Yeah, it's six inches. Okay, I, I'm comfortable that that would, if a truck went over that, it, uh, it would know it. Yeah, I notice it, yeah. Other questions from commissioners? No. I had a couple of other thoughts. Um, one is I would strongly recommend against calorie pair. They're actually going to ban them in the states, in the state, uh, in the Commonwealth, because they're invasive. And we have a, a huge problem at 20 Bridge Road with invasive calorie pair. So uh, that's having to be managed in the conservation area. Um, so just that's actually not over uh, by the, the wetlands area. It's on the other side of the building, apparently, but I, it's just my own suggestion. <laughs> um, my other question is, I noticed that, um, I was wondering if there have been any soil samples done. I noticed that the proposal talks about liming and also about uh, adding fertilizer, uh, including phosphorus. And I, I didn't quite understand it was it was actually uh, where the fertilizer was going to be added. Uh, was that to in the uh, in the buffer zone area? Uh, I think that came from a typical construction detail note we have that any new loamed and seeded areas are to have a light application of starter fertilizer just to help things germinate and get going. But we can strike that if the commission does not want to see that. Would a, would a conservation seed mix require less phosphorus? So, Melissa, I think. Uh, conservation seed shouldn't require any fertilizer, actually, um, depending on the uh, uh, condition of the soil. So I, I think a soil test would be appropriate uh, before proposing any particular <clears throat> uh, amendments. Um, and they, certainly shouldn't need phosphorus, which is a huge problem for, for and nitrogen as well, uh, for eutrophication mm. in waterways. So, um, because of the runoff. Um, yeah, like I said, that was just a, a boilerplate detail. We can, yeah. we can remove the application of fertilizer. Yeah, maybe just a, a whole, uh, something with a soil test and proposed uh, plants. <laughs> Uh, uh, in addition to the to the several trees that are mentioned, <clears throat> well, yeah, a more comprehensive planting plan. Yes, um, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Sorry. To to be approved, um, we don't have to uh, work that out tonight. But uh, to be approved by Sarah, uh, who would act as the agent of the commission, um, and that would include both the initial mix and whatever kind of maintenance. Uh, would be required to maintain that healthy, more natural um, uh, uh, kind of replacement that you're building there. Yeah, my my sense is the um, ones along the rail trail nearby are pretty high trophic state. There's quite a bit of primary productivity there. And less phosphorus would certainly be a benefit. And Ryan, given that the site has been compacted for so many years, um, are, are there plans to aerate or scarify the soil to reintroduce some aeration? Uh, the pavement would be removed and then any, any gravel sub-base until it hit a suitable substrate and then loam would be inlaid to bring it up to pre-existing grade. So any compacted soils underneath the pavement would be removed as well. Okay. Okay, any other um, questions or comments by commissioners? I, I had a kind of a curiosity question. I was reading that it said that um, they'll be checking uh, for run for erosion after any significant rainfall, um, but I didn't see any definition of what a significant rainfall uh, would be. Is that is there that a general sort of standard in for construction sites? I believe it said over a half an inch. Okay. Well, uh, somewhere on their plan there. Oh, did it say? Okay, I didn't yeah. see that. I'm not sure what sheet or where that was on, but typically when uh, 
Sites triggered greater than an acre of SWIP stormwater pollution prevention plan is required. And under those requirements, um, any rainfall event greater than one quarter inch is what is required for inspection. Okay, Th thanks for the edification. Uh, I'm relatively new here, Ryan, so it helps me to, to learn. I was <clears throat> by a construction site in Greenfield during the horrendous storm that we had and up by the McDonald's by the roundabout and you just saw this massive erosion and runoff in that construction site going on. It was a little bit disturbing. <clears throat> anyway, it helps me to understand and, and learn more. I appreciate it. No problem, welcome. To that end though, I think um, we may require that um, we have excess erosion control material on site uh, in case you know we're getting more intense storms now um, and we're going to get runoff that's really going to strain your uh, control system, especially if it's hay bales and silt fence. Mm -hmm. We yeah, may... that, that's included as part of the standard conditions, and we do check it as part of the okay. construction visit. I, mean, I was looking for it on their list. Well, but yeah, I think what Sarah's saying is that our standard, you know, the yeah. six, 16 item, uh, the first page of uh, conditions has got that in it. Okay. It goes with all of our order of orders of conditions. Any other questions or comments from commissioners? Uh, any questions or comments from members of the public? I think there are still a couple members of the public on uh, the call. If not, uh, someone want to make a motion to close the hearing? I'll move. Second. A second. Um, all in favor? Sarah, roll okay. call. Roll call vote to close the hearing. Paul? Yes. David? Yes. Mason? Yes. Melissa? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. And uh, so we have, uh, uh, in our discussion, it seemed like it's reasonably straightforward, but we've added a couple of uh, conditions about that um, uh, replication or improved area um, to be seed mix rather than lawn and uh, to have some kind of planting plan, formal, complete, comprehensive planting plan, uh, a uh, protective curb to minimize the likelihood of trucks uh, backing into it or running over it, um, and some kind of maintenance plan for ongoing uh, uh, future years. Uh, did I miss anything, Sarah? Are there any other conditions that we want to add? I think that's everything I heard. Anything else? If not, someone want to make a motion to uh, uh, grant an order of conditions with standard conditions plus uh, those uh, couple of additions. So moved. So moved by Paul, second by David. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor, Sarah? All right, roll call. Paul? Yes. David? Yes. Mason? Yes. Melissa? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. All right, you view this. Okay, thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. All right, good enough. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what we have for our agenda today, unless you have anything else, Sarah. So we, we do just need a vote to continue the hearing. Oh, uh, sorry. Yes. Uh, 545 on September 12th. Skip all over that. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, someone want to make a motion to continue as per the request by the applicant, uh, the 12-unit uh, cluster development on View Avenue until the 12th of September. So moved. And a second? Second it. Made and second. Any further discussion? If not. Um, all in favor? Paul? Yes. David? Yes. Mason? Yes. Melissa? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. All right. Thank you. Um, anything else, Sarah, for today, tonight? I, I think... guess it's not really night yet, but... Uh, I have something. I believe that's all. Do you? Mason? Yeah. Um, I was looking at the comments for the uh, hearing that we didn't have. <laughs> and... Uh, one of them kind of laid into us about uh, being 
having outdated and not correct uh, stuff in our, our our wetlands act. Uh, I'll make that comment when we have the meeting. One one answer is EP is now in the process of upgrading the Wetlands Act to include climate change right. problems. But we aren't, um, and maybe we should. I kind of think we should wait maybe to see what DEP has to have for changes and then apply them. Well, they'll be automatically applied to us anyway because we know on um, copy the DEP stuff and then we add to it. Might want to wait for that, but it's certainly considering that we're getting intense storms. Um, Bane of most farmers. Yeah, so at a future ag agenda, um, I'll definitely be including a discussion of what DEP is doing to upgrade the and, and update the uh, Wetlands Protection Act and its regulations. Um, some people say it goes too far. Some people say it doesn't go far enough, um, but that, that will be upcoming. I don't know what their schedule has been or how much anybody's been paying attention to it, um, but I've been following it really closely so I can give everybody an overview um, and then also have some recommendations for some um, wetlands ordinance updates potentially as well. Yeah, what bothered me is the person just made a blank statement and wasn't specific as to what needs to be upgraded and so on, but uh, certainly something to take a look at. Again, I'm kind of waiting to see what EP has to do. Hmm. Yes. Well, you you remember uh, because it, 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 the the local ordinance was passed just before I came on the commission, um, so you were here for that, Mason, and remember the uh, number of hearings and discussions from various parties that led to uh, the creation of that ordinance, um, mm -hmm. and then still. We've had a couple of times to go back to city council to request an amendment um, for things that didn't get all the way thought through. Um, so this is a living process. And yes, indeed, we've uh, uh, the more data we have about um, the, the way in which um, increased precipitation is uh, the new norm. And yeah. uh, hopefully part of what the state is doing is gathering some of that information to try and do projections of of uh, uh, how things might, how, how our regulatory framework might need to be modified in the, the light of uh, those changes. And as you say, once we have that information from the state, uh, we can then take on our own process. Uh, fortunately, we have uh, Sarah, uh, a professional environmentalist who is paying a lot of attention to this stuff and will help us make some of the proposals initially. Um, my my own experience has usually been reactive. Uh, that you know, when we, for instance, wanted to allow somebody to uh, repair and remove uh, a, a, a sewer system that was leaking directly, it was an old uh, um, and a very old box, uh, very primitive uh, sewer system leaking into a wetland. But the way that the ordinance had originally been written. We couldn't permit people going in to fix it, um, so we had to get a, a, an amendment from city council first before we could allow that. So some of those kinds of things we'll uh, have to uh, revisit without being reactive in the way that uh, I, you know, hey, well, we ought to be able to fix this, and the ordinance says we can't. So that's that's a reactive way. Sarah's more able to do more proactive kind of consideration of what amendments we might need to the existing ordinance. Actually, we're still going to have reactive things like hunting every time that yeah. <laughs> ugly head. Uh, you have, you know, that was a great hearing. Or something like that. that was a great hearing, by the way. Yeah, very hunting, well. Hunting hearing. I was at it. It was a, yes, I was at it. It was very well run. Yeah, but, well, you should have been there when the uh, wave issue came up in in the Oxbow. Oh. Oh, and uh, missed that one. 
Oh, that was great. The the room we're in city council chambers and the whole room was lined with people oh. from Marina. You know, the, yeah. Well, it, and that raises another question, but I'm I'm assuming we're going to continue uh, as uh, Melissa's recent bout of COVID helps um, remind us. COVID's still alive and and kicking, and um, Sally has just gotten over it, uh, and oh. uh, somehow I didn't get it, even though our son was in the room with me as much as with her, and he was the source. So, uh, but she was pretty sick for uh, for a bit. So I'm going to continue to recommend that we meet by Zoom for the time being and see um, what happens maybe in the spring and if people start to get a better handle on how to protect everybody from uh, these kinds of transmissible. Uh, uh, Even if it ends, I mean, I, I, I can see, say, Zoom meetings through the winter. So you're not yeah. sliding downhill to City Hall, depending on where you're coming in from. Yeah. Right. Would it be possible to have both in-person meetings with some participants on Zoom? Or is that too much of a hassle? Uh, we we could if the commission wants to talk about changing the meeting format, we could add that to a, a future agenda. Future agenda. Potentially. I know it is, certainly has assisted me in more consistent attendance. You're in yeah, you're in your car frequently. <laughs> <Not really. laughs> <No. laughs> I have parked it a city hall. <laughs> It's uh, yeah right. No, it's actually parked <laughs> in front of my uh, choral chorus rehearsals. <laughs> right, right, right. Thursdays. So I had a question about the Landy Ave hearing. I felt like we held our nose and voted for something that just squeaked by the strict guidelines. And I wonder what is the boundary between the Conservation Commission and the Planning Board when residents bring up such serious concerns about neighborhood flooding that we're powerless to really um assist with what what's the boundary there that's that's a tough question because there's so much interaction between planning board issues and conservation commission issues. i know and especially between the commission and dpw for a while there in, in most towns uh, those were dead enemies the uh, yeah. commissions conservation commissions where we've worked out a system of uh, generic order of condition and so on. They've been pretty good. Uh, I know it's a Do tough question. A, 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 a clear answer for that, Sarah? Because my, my, uh, my own answer would be, Paul, that we each have our set of rules um, that are we are constrained by. Um, and right. that we are empowered by, but also constrained by, um, and that they, there are some areas of overlap, but um, mostly we each have our own uh, requirements, and we operate semi-autonomously or semi-independently from each other. Right. Right. Yeah, um, I think that's a, that's a good answer, Kevin. I mean, there's you know no board is an island and everyone's working within the same framework, but, you know, the Conservation Commission is operating under um, the Wetlands Protection Act and its regulations, which are very specific about uh, what can and can't be considered. And the, the planning board, um, you know, at the same time is operating under the Zoning Act and the city zoning ordinance. Yeah, it just seems but, to me that um, quality of life issues should be um, handled by the planning board, frankly, because it's outside of our scope, but yeah, I would I would say that's correct. Yeah. And the, the the conservation commission is is charged with with wetlands. Yeah. And so uh, other items, for the most part, would be out of, outside of your purview. Yeah. Yep. Okay. The other question, right. I have, Kevin, is um about the CPA membership. I you know I I've said that I'm interested in it, but I'm not able to join it this fall, so I'm not sure where this stands because there is an open. I'm meeting. continuing this fall. You will. Okay. Yeah. And then I'm happy to consider that next year. Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. Um, we're, we're, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's an interesting one. I just know Sally has been working with an Afghan family ever since they, on two hours notice, had to fly out of Kabul um, with nothing except what was on their backs. Oh. Um, and has been uh, living around here for now two years. And they just won the lottery for uh, a habitat home 
Um, and uh, that's one of the things that we funded from CPC last round. Um, and so it's a, you know, I guess wow. it was like 80 applicants and they they won. So they're, they've already started last week helping with the construction. So Jeez. they're Ooh. putting sweat equity into their own home uh, yes. in right. the new country. Wow. Kind of good when you have an experience that just comes around uh, to a program that we have and see it in action. Yeah, nice. Anything else for today? If not, oh, Jackie Balance, I see. Did, is your hand up from a leftover uh, prior thing, or do you have something else you wanted to say? Uh, no, I just wanted to tag on to something that Paul said. Um, so the, the public comment period is, oh, has ended. So the, um, th that was at the beginning of the meeting. I see. Thanks, Sarah. Next time. All right. And Jackie, Thanks, feel, free to, feel free to reach out to me directly. I'm, I'm happy to chat with you. Um, the uh, next meeting is on the 12th of September, um, and we know at least one of the cases that we'll be considering at that time. Um, so, uh, we'll, in. and, and yep. Yep. that's that's got a a lot of material associated with it. So yep. we'll we'll have a fair amount of homework to do um, getting ready for that one. And I'll be in my mobile office. Okay. <laughs> All right. Good. All right. Thanks, everybody. Adjourn at right. six ten. All right. Thank okay. you. Yeah, bye-bye. Have a good bye -bye. A good Labor Day weekend. Yeah. See you all soon. Bye-bye. Thanks, Sarah.